This video will show a little bit about how to play recorded files in Linrad. On this computer I have the Linrad source code and also uh, the X11 screen is installed but nothing else. There is no sound system. First uh, create a place where to store uh, recordings and I am logged in as the normal user BSZ and I don't like that I want to be root and uh, to make it easier to see what I'm typing so we need somewhere to store the recording. And then I have to get the recording and I get it from the internet. Uh, there are some recordings on my home page. And a little bit down the page, you can see for example this thing and maybe this one. So right click on it and save and save so now it's complete I go to the location where it's downloaded I start with two terminals, it doesn't matter uh, CD And look at the file. So we unpack the file, places, downloads, and click this, extract, and extract. Very good. Close. So here we can see the file. And the wave file is not very much bigger, but it's a little bit bigger. That's why it's packed. Now I switch to uh, root user. and uh, copy I don't want to keep anything important in the, this downloads folder that's just a, a trash folder for me so uh, to play this file in Leanrod uh, I have to create a file with the folder name and the file name. This is where the Linrad source code resides. And it is compiled also, so I have the executable here. And in this Linrad directory, I have to create a file uh, 
which has to have this name. So here I have to specify uh, what files Linrad should play as input. I can specify a second file name here. Uh, by doing that, uh, Linrad will store parameters for the processing in the file A640 and other files starting with these four uh, characters. Uh, test. The same file, but uh, bid another parameter specification. Uh, I can play the same recording with two different sets of parameters in Linrad. So exit, control X, yes and start Linrad. This is a fresh install and this is a demo, so I say I'm a newcomer. Press N, enter, select screen size, I do it as percent. Uh, screen width, sorry, I made it pixels. Okay, let's make it 1000 pixels by uh, 700. First I have to uh, set up the sound system or input output rather. That's by U. And select something and I select disable because there is no sound system yet on this computer. Disable output as well and go to the main menu, press something, and save here. And then process the first file named in ADWAV, uh, that is 2. And mode, well, uh, AM, that's F. Repeat the recording endlessly, yes. Interpret this as I and Q data, yes. And do not invert the frequency scale. And this is the first run, so there are no parameters. So press any key. And as a newcomer, I can only change a few things, but I don't change anything. I just press enter and then enter again. And here we are. Uh, I can click this and you can see here on the S meter, the signal level, and so on. Well, now it's time to install sound so we can hear what's going on here. Escape to exit, and yes. To install sound, uh, I need, the best way is to run configure. with help. Not present, install the ALSA package and we are under Debian, so let's take this and paste it in, uh, sorry, copy and then here, paste. It is necessary to run configure once more. Because now it sets up the uh, variables in the various files here to tell Inra that the sound system is installed. Uh, and compile. So 
So, compilation complete. Now we can run Linode again. And uh, now we can use the newly installed sound system. So I press U and then uh, select the output, that's B, and zero for the ensonic, the first, and exit, and save with W, right to disk. Now we can run and have sound output. Uh, without sound, uh, it is possible to send the signals that Linra generates to the network and process in other computers. That's why I have shown this option, but I don't go into the details on the network because that's not the newcomer stuff. So play. Uh, click on something. This is a Norwegian station. I can make the waterfall faster, like that, and uh, also here. And I can change the bandwidth. And you can see the time here, it's the time when the recording was made. If I want to play a small section of the recording, I press F. And here you can see when the recording starts and ends. So start at zero point, let's say, 7.50 and stop at 0.7.59 So this way if something is difficult to hear I can listen to it many many times So, by going back to the main menu and then again into processing the file, uh, the whole file be processed again. The markups from the F function have been forgotten. Uh, let's look at a not so good signal here, for example. Uh, here the carrier is a little bit outside the narrowest filter. Uh, the bandwidth of which I can control by this control, so it's 30. Now it's wider. I can use the arrow keys, because I don't have a mouse on this computer, on this mouse. Now the carrier is centered in the narrow filter. There are two filters, a wide one from here to here, and a narrow one from here to here. By clicking this box, I go into coherent reception. I can go to the mode three. Now the signal is not uh, AM, it is synchronous AM modulation. And I can make the filter narrower, let's say 100. And it's very important to have the carrier within the filter here. Oh. And you can see we have an interference up here. 
Uh, I can apply a notch on that. One. The first notch. I put it on position zero. That's on the carrier and give it some width. Let's say 20. This removes the carrier and now the signal is detected by only the uh, what comes through the narrow filter and this affects the way the AGC works. Then I can apply one more notch. Uh, should be somewhere maybe minus 748. Comes here. I can make the notch a bit wider. And now the signal is quite a bit clearer than it was before. So this is synchronous detection of AM uh, with notch filters. It can be rather powerful. If you remember how it sounded before. I can remove these things. So sometimes it's very useful, sometimes it doesn't make much of a difference. It's for the experimenter to play with these tools.